Hey guys, welcome back to Nurse Catherine here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to cover the what, the how, the why, and even some practice problems of ABGs, arterial blood gases. But before we get started, let's talk about what actually is an ABG. So, an ABG is looking for the amount of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the pH of your blood. And when would you use this? You would use this to measure the patient's lung function. So how much oxygen they are taking in and how much carbon dioxide they are removing from their bodies. Now, let's dive into the nitty gritty of ABGs. So first guys, let's dive into our five key components of an ABG. You have the pH we are looking at, the partial pressure of oxygen, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, bicarb, which is HCO3, and your oxygen saturation. Now let's focus on our normal values. We are going to keep three of the five components particularly in mind, which would be the pH, the B PaCO2, which is your carbon dioxide, and your HCO3, which measures your bicarb. The pH level of 7.35 to 7.45 is normal. That's the normal pH of your blood. Now your PaCO2, the amount of carbon dioxide you want going in and out of your body is easy to remember because it's between 35 and 45, similarly to the pH of your blood of 7.35 to 7.45. Now HCO3, that is your bicarb, so think of your metabolism. Think about how your metabolism is much slower than how fast you can breathe, okay? So the PaCO2 is your carbon dioxide, think of your oxygen in your body. Now HCO3 is your bicarb, which is with your metabolism, so right, your metabolism is slow. So these numbers are lower, think about because your metabolism is slower. So now guys, let's get into interpreting ABGs. So your first step will be to look at the pH level. So is it high or is it low? If it's high, it's alkalotic. If it's lower, that means the acidity is lower, so it's acidotic. So now that we have covered if it's alkalotic, or acidotic, then you now look at your PaCO2. So you are going to think of the acronym ROME. ROME means respiratory opposite metabolic equal. So in your ABGs, you will find that if you are respiratory acidotic, so the pH is less than 7.35, your CO2 is opposite of your pH, hence the acronym ROME, respiratory opposite metabolic equal. So when you're acidotic, when your pH is less than 7.35, your CO2 over here is going to be higher than 45. So that would represent respiratory acidosis. Coming down to respiratory alkalosis, your pH is higher than 7.45. So that would be your respiratory alkalosis. But also remember, when you're looking at these ABGs and it's, your CO2 is lower than 35, Remember, respiratory is opposite. That would hence tell you it is respiratory alkalosis because the CO2 is opposite than the pH. Your arrows are a big indicator of what is going on in the patient. In contrast to that, let's go down to metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. So remember Rome, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Metabolic acidosis, your pH is lower than 7.35 which would create the acidosis but your co2 is normal but now we have to come over here to our co3 remember the co3 from this side and this chart that's your metabolism that's your bicarb remember your metabolism is slow so when that metabolism is going slower your arrow is going down if it's less than 22. So metabolic is equal. The arrows are equally both going in the downward direction, creating the respiratory acidosis. Metabolic, I'm sorry, metabolic acidosis. Metabolic alkalosis, your pH is higher than that 7.45, which we have determined is alkalotic. Your CO2, your respiratory status, so this area right here is for your respiratory area. This area right here, the HCO3, is for your metabolic, your bicarb, right here. So when those arrows are equally both going up, then you know it is metabolic. 
respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So metabolic alkalosis, your alkalotic, that pH is high, it's greater than 7.45. Your CO2 is normal, so you know nothing is going on in your respiratory system. But when you get to your CO3, your bicarb, your metabolism, it's increased. So then you know right here, it has to be metabolic. And I know this can be very challenging, guys, reading ABGs and understanding ABGs, which is why we're going to go into some practice problems right now. So let's start with our first practice problem. Here are your blood gases, your pH, your CO2, also your carbon dioxide, and your HCO3, which is your bicarb. Now, first, let's determine if these are normal. We will start with our pH. Our normal pH we know is between 7.35 and 7.45. Now 7.37 in between that, yes. So we know, check, that is normal. Let's move on to our PaCO2, which is our carbon dioxide. Now this one is 40, but we know from down here, it says our PaCO2 normally would be 35 to 45. Is 40 in between that? Yes, we know. Okay, that is normal. Now let's move on to our HCO3. We know from down here it says a normal is between 22 to 26. Now 22 is right on the edge, but it's still normal. So we know that is also okay. So this ABG is normal. Okay, so let's go on to question number two. Now I want you to pause right now, pause this video, look at these results of the arterial blood gas that was drawn and try to figure this out for yourself before we figure it out. So let's get started. Let's look at our pH. So we see 7.50. So we know from our table that is not normal and that is too high. So draw your arrow of too high. Now let's go over to our bicarb. Let's go over to our P. I'm sorry, our um, carbon dioxide. Let's go over to our PaCO2. Now 45, it's on the edge over here. We know it's on the edge, but it is normal. So we're just gonna do a big old check mark. We know that is normal. Now let's go over to our bicarb, our metabolic um, result. That is our HCO3. Now we see that is 34, which is insanely high compared to what our normal values are. So we know that is an arrow that is high. Now let's remember Rome. Remember that respiratory is opposite, metabolic is equal. So we see two arrows going up, one at metabolic and one for our pH. So from this table, we know a high pH level would be considered alkalotic. Now over here, we know a high CO3 level would be metabolic. So we have metabolic alkalosis. And that would be the answer for this problem. Let's go into our third question and we have one more question left after this. So let's look at our pH here. Is our pH high or low? We can see it is clearly low, less than 7.35. So let's draw our arrow there. Next, let's go into our PaCO2. We see it is 9.35. One, we can clearly see again, that is a low under the level of 35. So let's draw our arrow down. And lastly, let's go into our bicarb, our metabolic area. It is 26 and that is on the brim of our normal levels of 22 to 26, but it is still normal. So we will draw a check mark there. Now going from these results, we can clearly see we are acidotic, we are low, and it's our respiratory system. So this would be respiratory acidosis. Now let's start with our final question, question four. But before we start with this question, I am going to talk about something called compensation. So hang around for after this question and we will start talking about compensation. So in this question, we see our pH here. We see it's 7.46, which we know is high. So make sure you draw your high arrow. Then we move on to our respiratory. Respiratory is always second to look at. Now is 35 high, low, or normal? We know that is normal. And lastly, we move to our bicarb, which is our metabolic number. So 
30 we know is high from looking over here at our uh, chart. So we know that is high. Now before I write it, say out loud what you guys have seen here. We have a high and a high. Remember the acronym ROME. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. We know they are equally both going up. We know that is our metabolic number. Our respiratory is okay and our pH is high. So we have metabolic alkalosis. So now you guys are like, wait, what? what is compensation? What are you talking about? I am going to put a link in this video. You can also see it in the description area down below or right here on the screen. That is a link to some practice problems that talk about compensation. And I feel as this, as those practice problems can explain it much better than I can. It gives you a scenario. It helps you figure it out and whether this ABG is compensated or not. This video was meant to just give you the bare minimum basics of what an ABG is and why we do it and some easier problems. But there are harder problems when it comes to ABGs and that link is the perfect place to go for those questions. And I am in no way affiliated with that company or with that link. I'm not getting paid for anything. Um, I just found that was very helpful for me when studying about ABGs. And that does it for this video, guys. I hope this was a nice little refresher or a nice little beginning education to ABGs and how to read ABGs. If you have any questions, please comment below. Other than that, I will see you in next Tuesday's video and have a blessed week.